What's news for, for me at the Internet Archive is we declared ourselves out of austerity, uh, which I have to say is completely wonderful. Um, and I realize the theme is, is, is small stories, so I'm going to end with a small story, but I'm going to actually shoot larger than that um, with a theory uh, and a, a, a direction that we're going, and we could really use help. Um, so the idea here, and I, I think of this whole talk as having a bit of a question mark at, after it, but um, I'd like to see this uh, come about, and we have a lot of them, the money and power uh, to be able to do at least our piece of it. What we'd like to do is get all libraries online. So the idea is to try and make it so that we don't have one library that rules them all, or one book vendor, or one portal, or one bookstore, that we have a decentralized, distributed approach towards uh, um, information dissemination um, into the 21st century. And this is completely counter trend to the uh, current winner takes all, everybody's gonna be using Gmail uh, any day now, um, and all distributed email is going to go away, or you know, it's all gonna become AWS. It, so all these platform plays are, are going towards centralization, and I'm still uh, trying to get the decentralized uh, thing to go, and I, I think we've got a, a mechanism of trying to get there, so I would like your opinion. So the Internet Archive, um, you guys may know it, we're over in the uh, uh, <coughs> Richmond district, um, is, and this is our headquarters, and we have large collections and we've been trying to make them available. The idea is to try to build the Internet into the Library of Alexandria version 2. Can we make all the published works of humankind available to everybody? So, so I'm just gonna go down a bunch of statistics of just sort of how, how are we doing towards this. We're doing pretty well on software. Um, uh, we've now got emulation uh, going for basically um, all the apples and uh, Commodore 64s and Ataris and all of that to try to bring uh, software to lots of people. We're starting to collect physical materials because libraries are throwing it away. So we've got about 2.3 million books now. We're trying to get to eight or nine million physical books um, and we digitize them as we can. We have about two million moving images online. We digitize these, but also people post them. Um, this is not counting the uh, collections that we have of YouTube or um, uh, Google Video and Yahoo Video that are extinct now, but lots and lots of audio recordings. Um, we're starting to really move forward on 78 RPM records, which is completely fun. So 70, I don't know, that was really before my time. Um, but the, the, these 78s are wonderful because they're not, rec they're not perf recordings that were designed to be recordings. There were performances and that happened to be recorded and it, it makes a very different thing. So we're, um, we've just done a thousand sides, we're gonna do 20,000 and then 400,000 sides and that should get us pretty close to what 78s were. Um, we've got uh, lots and lots of television, we're doing political ad um, uh, mining and the like. We have about four million ebooks, uh, mostly public domain um, books that we've uh, uh, either digitized or collected from other projects, and lots and lots of web pages. Uh, it comes to a lot of data. Um, come see our servers. If you want to come, I invite you to come visit our petabytes. Uh, it's actually kind of fun, uh, little blinky lights. Okay, but back to the point. So what we'd like to do is at the end of the day have a system where there are lots of publishers, lots of libraries, everyone a reader, and authors get paid. Wouldn't that be great? Um, so what I'd like to do is to try to wave a wand over libraries and say, now your collections are digital. So anything you, you had in physical form, boink, now you have a digital version of them, and you can do the same things with those that you could do in the physical world. So this is uh, the idea, and we're making a little bit of progress towards this and could use your help. The problem was, I think, specified well by Mike Lesk, who I think of as the father of digital libraries. Uh, he's worried about the 20th century and uh, in institutional responsibility. So those are so the 20th century, because it's caught up in copyright crap, um, uh, often without anybody making any money out of it, but it's really being withheld from this next generation. Um, and institutional, we don't know who's supposed to do what. Especially the libraries are really confused. Do they, should they just be subscribers to other people's databases and become a customer service department? That's what they're doing. Um, but is that the right thing to do? Um, if not, how do they move forward? So 
let's just take the area of books. Um, so 19th century, scan it and give it away. Um, so it's public domain, uh, don't put locks on the public domain. Google, unfortunately, working with a, a few libraries, did put locks on the public domain, and these locks don't undo for another 20 or 30 years, um, and I think that's um, really wrong, and hopefully they wise up to their bad ways and, and release it, but until then, we're just digitizing things and giving them away. 20th century, digitize and lend, and I'll say more of that. And the 21st century is buy and lend. And when I say buy from publishers, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys um, sell stuff, please sell it in the same way that we used to sell physical things. And so we have the same rights to go and hold them and to lend them. Um, if we don't do that, we end up with these high transaction cost licensing agreements with lots of lawyers and things start slow down and it ends up with very few participants being able to get through it. Even the music guys, who are not really known for being terribly innovative, um, started selling MP3s. Um, actually, large cars because Steve Jobs told them to, um, but they did. And, uh, and that's at least uh, working to a certain extent. So what does lending mean? Uh, on openlibrary.org, it's a website that we operate. Please try it, openlibrary.org. You can borrow a book. Um, what does borrow mean? Well, this is a book that actually Peter Brantley uh, bought uh, for the uh, Internet Archive a while ago, but it's, um, but it's been checked out. In other words, that there's a copy and there's only one person at a time can read it because we only bought one copy. Um, and it said we'd like to borrow it, but it's been checked out so we can add it to our wait list. If you take a less popular book, this is a book that's been digitized out of the Boston Public Library. So they have a physical copy of this 1994 book um, and they digitized it and they uh, make it available online through Open Library. Um, and it's, uh, you can pick it, you can read it in a browser uh, you can download in one of these exploding PDF things um, or an exploding EPUB. Exploding in the sense that after two weeks it, it goes away. Um, um, it, it, it sort of automatically returned. Um, so yes, I want to check this out. It says who it's coming from and you can borrow this book. We've been doing this in, since 2010. So it's six years of this and we've been digitized and we've digitized and lent 300,000 different titles, about 500,000 different editions, and that's going on and working. So we've sort of tried this out at scale, um, and it, it, it is working for people, but there are some problems to it. It means that there's only one copy floating around, and that's not enough. Um, so is there a way of working with the library system to go and bring their collections digital, and more importantly, have them start buying new books um, and putting them into these uh, collections? What we want to do is bring all libraries digital. Um, so what would this mean? Um, there's the Mechanics Institute Library, which is this completely fun and funky little library uh, in San Francisco. It's one of the last subscription-based libraries. Um, and I, I just made this up. Um, um, but you could imagine if every catalog record, you are in your library or whatever, and you could either get the book version and find it on the shelves in some, uh, with some call number, or you can click on the get the ebook version, and then you, you've borrowed it. So you can borrow eBooks just as easily as, wouldn't that be nice? Well, that would mean that people even remotely could use all these different kinds of, of machines to read the books, and they're actually doing pretty well. My favorite is the one on the bottom uh, right, which is a little talking machine. So you can download it and it will read to you. It talks a little bit like this, um, but it reads to you and you can read it fast. Um, and it turns out there are about seven or 10, seven to nine percent of the of the students at the University of Toronto, which is a major uh, uh, research university, have trouble reading. Um, so there's more people than you'd imagine um, that have trouble with print materials, even uh, in the high-end uh, colleges. So how to do all of this? Well, scan what we, um, buy what we can, scan what we have to. So we built up little scanners. The idea is to have lots of libraries be able to bring what's unique to them online. Um, but we also need mass scanning. So this is something that um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that the Internet Archive has now gotten the funding to digitize all of the books that it physically owns. And that means that anybody that donates books, hopefully um, 
large collections of millions of books, we can digitize those and build a core collection. But it doesn't then, that's good, that's a good core collection um, uh, that can enable other people's books to become digital. So if there's a digital version and you're in the Mechanics Institute Library and you have that physical book on your shelf, you have the choice of going and lending out the physical book or the ebook version um, based on the digitization done once. So it's effective, cost-effective digitization at scale with a distributed distribution model that goes and empowers and enables people that have already invested in those materials to be able to make those, um, those available to their, their patrons under the sort of um, restrictions that publishers use on their in-print books. Um, so I think of it kind of like when uh, CDs came out, I had this question of whether I should go and tape my LP or buy a CD. And I think these scan books are kind of like the cassette tapes. They, they're kind of okay. I mean, they look kind of like they did, but they, they're not as featureful and as high res or sort of handleable as the CD. So I, the EPUBs are the CD and the scan versions are the... Uh, uh, are the cassettes. So I think we should try to transition to the CDs by getting people um, uh, money um, by buying or rebuying the books, but when we can't do that, uh, we have an uh, option. So we've now digitized a lot and made things available, um, and so it's starting to go. Um, let me go back to Mike Lesk's um, puzzle of the institutional responsibility. So the 20th century, the idea is to digitize and lend it, to get it online, because it's really not available to, to people these days. If it's not online, it's as if it doesn't exist. People aren't. I was just at UC Santa Barbara, and I went through their, um, the, their main library, the first floor, and we looked for somebody with a book. We didn't find anybody with a book. Not one. There was no books that they were taking notes on. There were some printouts or, or Xeroxes, um, but there was not one book. It was it was a little you know I love my books, um, but uh, it, it, it's 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 uh, it's over. Um, so uh, so so what are the institutional responsibilities? What do we do? Um, publishers, please sell your eBooks with the same rights as physical books. Don't. Uh, don't lock things up so badly that you know, you're only going to be selling through Amazon or Overdrive or something. Um, and it turns out that libraries have a lot of money to spend on, on, uh, on e-books. Libraries, what we should do is lend books and lend e-books. That's what we do. We buy and lend. Um, so we buy what we can, scan what we have to. Library system vendors, we need them to participate to go and enable and make it really easy for libraries to just flip a switch and go and take their catalogs, which are records of their physical holdings, and enable them to have the e-version uh, of, of that. The Internet Archives uh, role is to actually become a large library. Um, in the past, we haven't been able to really afford that, so we've been basically working with libraries to help them come along and be sort of a technology partner, but the idea continue that and working with others, but also to go and digitize the millions of books that we currently have and buy, digitize, lend, and preserve these materials. So that's the general idea of trying to go and empower and enable the, the library system and the publishing system to have a distributed business model that will fight against the consolidation that we're seeing that's happening um, at web scale. A small story. Um, so, uh, one thing that is kind of uh, fun for me is we, I've set out to go and get um, a complete collection. Like, can we get a whole um, language, everything written in a language online available? And so I talked with the Greeks and they were too busy imploding. And there's uh, uh, the uh, Icelandic uh, folks have been back there, but there's one person out of 300,000 that, that says, no, really loud, and that's enough to stop it. Um, but we went to Bali, and Bali, and the Balinese uh, top cultural people said, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Our, our language is then actually smudged. Um, all the kids are being taught Indonesian. I mean, they, uh, the, 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 still the villages speak Balinese, 
but um, it's being transitioned from an outside force. So let's go and take everything ever written in Balinese and make it available online for free. It's like, all right. You know how they write? They write on palm leaves. I, I have the best job in the world. Anyway, so, uh, th so this is palm leaves. They, they scratch things into these palm leaves and then use lamp black to go and, uh, uh, and make it high contrast. Um, so we've basically um, paid to digitize everything in their major library. It's a, three million people live on Bali and speak Balinese. And we said, okay, how do they read these? And it turns out that actually most of the citizens of Bali don't know how to read Balinese. It was always read by the priests. Um, and um, so we're trying to do uh, transliteration uh, of, the, of the characters so that it would be in Romanized versions, which they can uh, speak phonetically and read. But we've also found that these uh, books are rendered as things like shadow puppet plays. Um, so we're starting to you know, try to match up the, what do these books mean to them. It's, um, it would be shadow puppet plays or, or dances uh, and the like. So these are... Um, what it means to bring a, uh, a literature of a people to go online. I'd say, hooray for the Balinese to go and be the first to actually say, yes, let's embrace this. So that's my little story. So I'd say we have the rights that we need to be able to, uh, to, to pull off this transition in a decentralized way. We have the money we need, uh, and we have the responsibility. We can bring all libraries digital. The goal is universal access to all knowledge. It can be one of the greatest achievements achieved by humankind. I think it can be remembered up there with the Library of Alexandria or the Man on the Moon. And as Andrew Carnegie, not known for being the most sharing guy in the world, uh, said and carved above uh, his legacy, building free to the people. Thank you very much. So five minutes Quest for questions. Questions? Anybody want to help? Um, yes. Anybody have ebooks for sale? It's, it's uh, up to um, each library to, to basically have the policy issues of how far they want to go. And it's based on their own rules and regulations within their countries. Um, and so, uh, so the, if you go to Open Library and you're in Australia, hey, borrow, it all works. <laughs> so it, it's, it's been working fine. Um, I think we're basically just so limited in terms of, you know, if, if somebody's really going to get upset about one copy circulating every two weeks, that's 25 people possibly reading this a year. If that's what people are really going to be worried about, they've got bigger business problems than, uh, than I have. Um, anything else? Actually, yes. uh, Yes. I'm trying, I'm trying not to be sued. Um, so the I, I, idea is that you know, Google was bold in, in trying to get this, this whole uh, together, and they uh, got sued, and they came up with this cockamamie scheme of, of having this um, central organization that's going to own and control all orphan works. And it was shouted down as, it was, it was, it was ruled illegal in the courts um, as being monopolistic. And I, actually, I, I, I agree. I think it was, uh, it was a wrong maneuver. I think we've been holding out for something that works. And this is crufty, um, but it, it's working. Um, and it's just by trying, how do we go and keep businesses going? I think at the end of the day, most of the 20th century books aren't commercially viable. And those should be circulated without restriction. Um, that, that We run into issues. Um, at the Internet Archive when we're interrupting commerce. And so once we, for instance, we put up all of the, um, the, the, the old 
classic software on Apples and IBM PCs and all that stuff. And we just put it up and these publishers came back and said, uh, you know, we're still hawking that, 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 and that, and that. And so we just went, blub, 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 and we just took them down. And it worked, right? Because they're still providing access. What we want is universal access. Some, some things are gonna be available for free, not for free. And we were giving it away en endlessly. So it's still preserved but we're sort of trying to work around things. Oh, we've come up with other things like going and lending, lending snippets of television, right? So you can't download the whole program. It's not a way of watching television. It's a way of doing research and trying to find how do publishing and libraries run in parallel so we can still leverage the funding that's still going to libraries. And if we screw up libraries' um, ability to buy things, um, people will just turn down the, uh, the, the money volume. One small question. One small question in the back. Oh, we want, I mean, this whole conference is about that new form of reading, you know, social reading of, of when you actually know other people are on this or going and pulling pieces of books out of lots of things. How do we make it so that Wikipedia actually has citations that are for real? Um, we've basically tried to bring up this whole generation of internet denizens without access to the published works. It's, I think it's, it, <clears throat> a big part of our, our job in life is to put the best we have to offer within reach of our children. And if we don't do that, they're going to learn based on whatever crap they can get a hold of, and we're going to get the generation we deserve. So I think they can, let's go and empower rather than just take it away from them and th let them run with it. But I, right now I'm feeling kind of bound up by sort of the old style to just try to make it so that people don't, well, sue us. Um, and try to make it so that lots of people make money. And so that's the, uh, that's the balance. Really what we need is these things to be able to be clipped and put in place uh, all, over the, all over the net and used and reused in interesting ways. Um, I just don't know how to do that yet with especially the 20th century lingering problems. Thank you very much. I'll be around all day. <laughs>